For a Mondoids exclusive, Jason heads on over to an 8-bit Camp Crystal Lake. Here's your look at the Mondo. This is the Mondoids exclusive Jason Voorhees collectible vinyl figure. From the depths of Crystal Lake comes Mondo's newest Friday 13th Mondoid, this time featuring the deadly Jason Voorhees in all his 8-bit colored glory. The Designer Con 2019 exclusive Jason Voorhees 8-bit variant Mondoid's vinyl figure features the head-swapping ability of the regular Mondoid, but comes in a cool 8-bit colors inspired by the classic Friday 13th video game. The exclusive Jason Voorhees is limited to a very small 500 pieces worldwide. Before we get a closer look at the exclusive NES Jason Mondoids, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall it stands. Now, I'm going to take this to the top of his machete. After all, that is the highest point on this collectible vinyl figure. So I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. And then regurgitating it, that sounds nice, to you guys, the viewing audience, I can tell you that the Mondoids NES Jason stands 3.9 inches in height. So that's, again, including the machete. And that in centimeters makes the figure or the vinyl collectible stand at about 10.1, a little over 10 centimeters tall. Joining Jason for some comparisons, here is the other Jason we had a look at before from Wave 1. And while we're also at it, sliding in on the right hand side, there is Melting Stripe that made up Series 1. Now, obviously, Melting Stripe is a completely different figure altogether, but the two Jasons paired side by side right here are pretty much carbon copies to one another. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Pretty much carbon copies to one another, short of the fact that the NES Jason has that splendid purple and blue, the color scheme that he has from the Friday 13th NES game. Likely, we're probably going to bring those back in later on, as they do also share the option to swap out their heads, which is one of the cool things that Mondoids possesses. But in the meantime, let's have a look at NES Jason. NES Jason consists of technically three pieces, a head, a torso, and then if you want to count it, technically it also does come included with the arm as well. This pops out, and in fact, when you do get this out of the packaging, you're really actually only getting this and this until you realize later that there's an arm actually in there as well. Like with the technically the other Jason that we also had to look at, nothing is really to tell you that you have to put this arm in. You could even have some fun and just have the arm draped to the side as if somebody has cut Jason's arm completely right off. I can't say that it would hurt Jason, as he certainly has experienced enough anyways. Look at the mess that Jason is left in. As this is obviously an NES Jason, this is all treated to that turquoise blue done in both the mask, the gloves, this glove here also as well, and uh, of course the rest of the body is all purple. The purple isn't quite the same color as say the body is to the rest of the head. The head seems like it's a slightly lighter shade. Uh, as again, like if you remove the head, well, actually for the sake of this, why don't we go ahead and pop the machete in place. It does seem a little awkward that there is, yes, a big hole opening on the side. So all you really have to do is know that obviously a machete is going to be facing forward. Jason, what's left of him at least is a severed off gooey stump. At least knows he has to be swinging at what's in front of him. So we're going to go ahead and just pop this in place, just peg that down, and then you've got yourself your finished piece. And then Jason, of course, just sits on top of that. The detailing done to Jason, I really liked initially anyways, when we had a look at the first Jason from Wave 1. It's sort of a carbled, jarbled up mess of multiple Jasons all sort of put together when we looked at this one. This is sort of a combination, I feel, of Friday 13th Part 7 Jason, the gloves, of course, from Friday 13th Part 6. And uh, I don't know if I would really call anything else pulled from other series. He even has right actually on the back here the open spine, similar to what he has in Part 7. So basically all the stuff that I really liked a lot about this particular Jason carries its way over to the now 8-bit Splendor that is the NES Jason, which pretty much has all the same workings. So for example, if we just pop the head off, for example, if we look at the two heads side to side, it still has the detailing done so slightly different. Like even in like the eye, for example, on the regular release Jason is more kind of an airbrushed pink. 
around the outer areas where those veins meet. And then on this one, it's actually more of a lighter color, almost looking as if they uh, painted it on with a paintbrush. Still, the maggots on the one side of his eye, which is now on this one, although this one actually looks like Big League Chew. Yes, I referenced Big League Chew. Does Big League Chew even exist anymore? Watermelon Big, Big League Chew was really where it was at when I was a kid. But it certainly does look like that wad of shredded chewing gum. I don't know if I would be chewing any bit the wad that's sticking inside Jason's eye socket, but they're really neat looking figures overall. They kind of look like really grotesque looking meatballs as well. The back has the open seam where a little bit of brain is peeking out. He's done his best, I will admit, by giving some stitches and staples that kind of keep the majority of himself together. But you can see he's sort of just slipping out slipping out his little brains. He's got a chain running around the side that kind of looks like it's pulled from Friday 13th Part 7. Jason, I guess the really beginning of Part 7 where he carries around that chain around his neck. So really, again, nice, really cool pieces. Now the thing about it, though, is while this one is more easily circulated, this one right here was actually a limited release to the Designer, uh, Designer Con 2019. So that was really the only way that you could actually have acquired this particular Jason. Actually, the good folks over at Mondo were nice enough to provide the sample for this one, as certainly if they couldn't, I would have most definitely wanted to source out one for myself. So if you are looking to pick these ones up for yourself, you can most definitely probably check eBay as your best bet. This one obviously will be more easy to pick up. This one might be a little bit harder to come by, but certainly if you're a fan of the NES Jason design like I am, I pick up basically anything that's NES Jason had to pick up this one as well. So really, really cool that Mondo was able to provide this one. Uh, as I said, though, they are swappable in the sense that if you do put the two bodies down, actually, you know what, let's look at the bodies here for a second as well. Obviously, again, not really much has changed other than the color scheme. Somehow this particular Jason done in NES colors bleeds a more vibrant red, whereas the original Jason had the more copper, almost purple tinted blood. This, the bottom's stumps sort of look like the sawed off section of a tree. And then again, you have that same carryover of machete. In case you are curious as well, you can pop the hand off. I don't know really why you would want to, but if you wanted to use the regular Jason, I mean, if you want to swap them to that extent, you can easily take the other Jason arm as they basically are the exact same mold and you can use the more bloodied machete instead of the more pristine machete that actually comes included with this release. Sort of in the same way as previous Jasons in NES colors have been treated to glow in the dark, it would have been really cool if they had somehow incorporated a glow in the dark blade for the machete that comes included with the vinyl figure. But still, nonetheless though, it's pretty neat the fact that you can even swap out right down to the fact that you can change out Jason's arms as well. But again, the whole appeal of the Mondoids, we'll go ahead and pop this one back into place, is that you can swap out the heads. Nothing is really telling you that it has to go specifically with this particular Jason. If you prefer more Maggot Jason than Big League Chew Jason, simply just pop the head off and then you can swap it out with the original Jason head sculpt that we looked at before. The colors don't quite work, but that's the whole appeal of these is that they you can mix and match them. So for example, if you want to take this one off and say swap it out with a melted stripe, you can do that. And boy, doesn't, doesn't that look ridiculous? It looks like he's actually getting dressed up and ready for work. Oh, except for the fact he is just an ooey gooey stump. The same thing can also be true as well if you wanted to bring in, for example, the melted stripe base. And say you want to take NES Jason's head, you can put there on there as well. It doesn't sit as well simply just because, again, you've got so much sculpting here for the melted stripe. But again, you can, the idea with these is that you can mix and match them, get them down to a design that you actually want. I mean, I personally love these. These are things certainly that I would have grown up and wanted to collect if I was a kid. And with the fact that you have the swappable capabilities, we'll swap these all out now so you guys can see. There is definitely a lot of customization available with the fact that you can actually change out the heads. The stripe and the regular traditional Jason that we had looked at before on this channel. Certainly we're big fans of those, but I did definitely want to get the NES Jason. We'll go ahead and swap him out right now. We'll bring this guy over, bring this one. After all, he is the focus of this review. We'll put on Jason over there, and we'll put the Melting Stripe right over there. There we go. While I definitely was a big fan of the regular traditional Jason, as I was saying, getting him in the more classic 
uh, cool NES color scheme in that turquoise blue and the purple. Boy, it does work really well with this particular Mondoid. Uh, bringing in, of course, enough color schemes that it does feel like a unique character, even though technically, sorry Stripe, we'll just move you out of the way for a second. Technically, yes, they are the exact same thing to one another, but that really is along with the territory of what you would normally expect with a lot of vinyl figures. When they come up with variants, the molds are exactly the same, but the swapping of the colors is where you get the real distinct look, distinct looks from one to the other here. As mentioned though, the 8-bit variants of Mondoid's Jason Voorhees and his vibrant NES color scheme at the time was only an exclusive to DesignerCon 2019. The way that collectors were able to pick this one up for themselves was to head on over to the Mondo Decon booth, and at the time, this guy was released. He was $40. Because he was limited to only 500 pieces worldwide, as you could probably guess it, the Mondoid's NES Jason has increased in value and places to pick up him now or places like eBay. So if you're in the market and enjoyed the Mondoids as much as I did, you may want to pick up the NES Jason. Especially if, like myself, you're a big fan of NES Jason. It just seems every time there's an NES version of Jason, I want to pick that one up. But this one is definitely a nice addition to your collection, and I'm really hoping to see more Mondoids from the folks over at Mondo. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Mondo who make this review possible. They were nice enough to send this one my way. Again, if you are in the market of picking up all the Mondoids for yourself, some of the Mondoids you can find through various sources like Mondo's website. The Mondo's uh, NES Jason, though, might be a little bit harder to come by. What do you guys think of this? Let me know down below in the comments section. And also, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on. And stay tuned, because there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.